Thank you for joining us in this current series. Actually, it's a brand new series called The Eternal Sabbath of the New Jerusalem. Now, you're probably wondering why is he starting a new series when he hasn't finished the series that I was in, The Invisible Return of Jesus Christ. Uh, It's just how things are working out. I plan on finishing that very soon. Uh, in the biblical sense of the term soon. (laughs) I hope to finish that series sometime here in the next week or two. Uh, We're very close. And also, thank you so much for being patient. I got the COVID and it was kind of a bummer. And, you know, it felt very, very similar to the flu. Uh, Maybe one of the differences is that I experienced some of that brain fog that people talk about. Uh, But I was in bed for three days straight and then just no energy for five days, sat around in a chair. It felt like uh, an alarm clock going off at 4 a.m. all the time (laughs) with no coffee. So anyway, I know a lot of you were praying for my health and uh, but it's so good to be back in the saddle again. again. And I'm excited. And uh, so anyway, um, This came about, this series came about by looking at Jeremiah chapter 17, which has a very well-known verse, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. And I was making a comparison between that passage and Genesis, which describes the serpent as more subtle than all the beasts of the field. So, uh, it was just a kind of a cool comparison and, uh, as I read through Jeremiah 17, uh, it just was so beautiful and so descriptive of the Sabbath, this, this kingdom period where God's people would enjoy the Sabbath and no, not a particular day of the week, but an eternal Sabbath, a rest in Christ. So this is called the eternal Sabbath of the new Jerusalem. And what I am going to endeavor to show is how the Sabbath and the New Jerusalem, that is the city set up on a hill, Jesus called the church that. We are the New Jerusalem. Uh, We are the Jerusalem from above, Galatians 4, the New Jerusalem. They're the heavenly Jerusalem, Hebrews 11 or 12, 22. And of course, Jesus called his people the city set up on a hill. That's us. It's a Jerusalem that is from above, a heavenly new covenant Jerusalem, as opposed to the Jerusalem from below, which was the old covenant Jerusalem. Again, read Galatians chapter four and compare it with Isaiah 54, as we're going to see tonight or today, um, Ezekiel 36, Jeremiah 31, uh, second Corinthians chapter three. So the title of this series, uh, It'll, it'll be a multi-part series, is the eternal Sabbath of the New Jerusalem. And again, it is, it is my uh, goal to associate those two and to show actually the associations of those two in the Word of God. So this is part one, and we're going to read a very long passage. It's the entire chapter of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 1 through 27. So just... Uh, be patient as I read through this, and then we will examine the first portion of this. So Jeremiah chapter 17 at verses 1 through 27, the sin of Judah is written with an iron pen. So it's important to understand that these prophets, these major prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, they were regarding Judah and Jerusalem. Now, it's not to say that they didn't speak of the northern kingdom of Israel. Uh, they do. Uh, but specifically, they involve predictions regarding Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, as we know, Assyria, the northern kingdom, uh, or Assyria took captive the northern kingdom of Israel, the 10 tribes in 721 BC. Uh, but then, uh, Jerusalem and Judah, they, they would go into exile around 586 BC, Babylonian captivity, as we refer to it. So that's what's going on here. This is the context. The sin of Judah is written with an iron pen. With a diamond point, it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of their altars. 
while their children remember their altars and their sacred poles beside every green tree, and on the high hills, on the mountains, in the open country, your wealth and all your treasures, I will give for spoil as the price of your sin throughout your territory. By your own act, you shall lose the heritage that I gave you. And I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger, a fire is kindled that shall burn forever. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength. Whose hearts turn away from the Lord, they shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Like the partridge hatching what it did not lay, so are all who amass wealth unjustly. In midlife, it will leave them, and at their end, they will prove to be fools. O glorious throne, exalted from the beginning, shrine of our sanctuary, O hope, of Israel, O Lord, all who forsake you shall be put to shame. Those who turn away from you shall be recorded in the underworld, for they have forsaken the fountain of living water, the Lord. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. See how they say to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come. But I have not run away from being a shepherd in your service, nor have I desired the fatal day. You know what came from my lips. It was before your face. Do not become a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of disaster. Let my persecutors be shamed, but do not let me be shamed. Let them be dismayed. But do not let me be dismayed. Bring on them the day of disaster. Destroy them with double destruction. Thus said the Lord to me, Go and stand in the people's gate by which the kings of Judah enter and by which they go out. And in all the gates of Jerusalem and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord. You kings of Judah and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem who enter by these gates. Thus says the Lord, for the sake of your lives, take care that you do not bear a burden on the Sabbath day or bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem and do not carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath. Or do any work, but keep the Sabbath day holy, as I commanded your ancestors. Yet they did not listen or incline their ear. They stiffened their necks and would not hear or receive instruction. But if you listen to me, says the Lord, and bring in no burden by the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but keep the Sabbath day holy, and do no work on it. Then there shall enter by the gates of this city kings who sit on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their officials, the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall be inhabited forever. And people shall come from the towns of Judah and the places around Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin, 
from the Shefala, from the hill country, and from the Negev, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, grain offerings and frankincense, and bringing thank offerings to the house of the Lord. But if you do not listen to me to keep the Sabbath day holy and to carry in no burden through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates. It shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and shall not be quenched. So again, the eternal Sabbath of the new Jerusalem. We clearly see the correlation there in that wonderful and sobering and joyful passage. So let's look at this. The sin of Judah is written with an iron pen with a diamond point. It is engraved on the tablet of their hearts. On the tablet of their hearts. So let's look at some comparative passages. The first of which is found in a very, very well-known passage, Jeremiah 31. It is a prophecy of the new covenant, and it is quoted twice in the book of Hebrews, which is a book of contrasts. It contrasts the two covenants, old and new covenants. So this well-known passage, Jeremiah 31 verses 33 through 34, shows this, uh, this concept of something being written on the hearts. Now, one of the things we know is that when Jesus died, he removed the sins of his people. And we are familiar with that type of language, the new covenant or laws written on the hearts of God's people. We see that in Deuteronomy. God prophesied uh, through the writer of Deuteronomy that he would circumcise their hearts, the hearts of his people. Well, in Jeremiah, it predicts this new covenant. It says, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, please see my series called, uh, if you are in the new covenant, if you are in the church, you are in the new covenant or the new heaven and new earth. If anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. Now, of course, Paul tells us, and this is related to the current series I'm going through, which I'm currently exploring in in the series, The Invisible Return of Jesus Christ. I'm exploring the covenantal context of 2 Corinthians chapters 3 through 6. Now, in chapter 6, and it's clearly a contrast. It's just like Hebrews. It's a contrast between the two covenants. But in chapter six, he says, you are the temple of the living God as it is written. I will be their God. They will be my people. I'll walk among them. Okay. So here he says, I'll write it on their hearts and I will be their God. They shall be my people. So this writing of the law upon the hearts is associated in that time frame at, at that time period of the new covenant, this new covenant, which Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10 clearly exclaims that this is fulfilled through the cross of Jesus Christ. He says, they shall be my people, but he doesn't stop there. He says, no longer shall they teach anyone or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. Then again, Hebrews chapter 8 is so clear. This has been fulfilled. Even First John says this. You need not that anyone teach you. And he's talking about the gospel, the revelation of the gospel. Okay, It is not taught by man. Paul says that very clearly in Galatians. So the gospel is what is, referring, is referred to here. Okay, That comes only by the revealing power of the Holy Spirit. That is what it means to be born again, to have a new heart. Okay? to have the law written on the heart, to obey his statutes, we obey them perfectly. You say, what? Yes, Romans chapter eight, verses one through four says that Christ fulfilled it and applies that fulfillment of righteousness to those of us who are of faith in Jesus Christ. So he says, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for, how do we know him? How How is this fulfilled? How the least to the greatest know him? I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Again, Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10, fulfilled for those who have faith in Jesus Christ. That is, the least of those to the greatest. Of whom? Those who have faith in Christ. You see that. 
Romans, again, chapters 3 through 8 are very, very clear. Well, Ezekiel says the same thing. Chapter 36. These are not two separate kingdoms. This is the same time frame, same same fulfillment, new covenant fulfillment. I will uh, Verses 25 through 29. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. Of course, that's the cleansing of the blood of Christ. And you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. There's no other time period that would provide this cleanness or this cleansing. And from all your idols, I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you. There it is. And a new spirit and I will put with I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. He's talking to the people of Israel. I will remove from your body. You people of Israel, I'll remove it. I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you. I will make you follow my statutes and make you be careful to observe my ordinances. We follow his statutes and his ordinances perfectly. We make no mistakes. You say, how can we say that? Because Christ fulfilled it for us, right? Again, Romans chapter eight, verses one through four. We, we fulfill the law. In God's eyes, we are seen as having fulfilled the law and obeying his statutes perfectly. That's how God sees us in spite of ourselves, amen? And to observe my ordinances, then notice what he says. You will live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people. I will be your God. There it is. Same context, same elements fulfilled. 2 Corinthians 6.16. I will save you. Jesus came to save his people from their sins. We are cleansed. Save from you from all your uncleanness. I will summon the grain and make it abundant and lay no famine upon you. Of course, John chapter six, the one who believes in him and comes to him will never hunger, never thirst. And then finally, in this first part, this first episode, second Corinthians chapter three, verses two through three, which of course, these, these are overlapping with my other series, the invisible return of Christ. You yourselves are our letter. And this is this idea of uh, having things engraved upon our hearts. Uh, You yourselves are our letter. The people of God are the letter, the epistle written on our hearts to be known and read by all. In other words, people would read our lives, look at our lives and know that God dwells in us or that God is with you. We have heard that God is with you as one of the prophecies, right? You are a city set up on a hill. Let your light so shine. They will know you're my disciples by your love for one another. The spirit of love, the spirit of liberty, the law of liberty, right? Galatians chapter five, verse one. So you're read by all and you show that you are a letter of Christ. We, God's people are the epistle, are the letter. People read Christ in our love, by our love. Prepared by us. Written not with ink, right? Referring to the old letter, the law, right? And that's what 2 Corinthians is contrasting, the two glories, the two covenants, the two laws. For the letter kills, but the spirit, what? Gives life. Written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone. You see the contrast there? But on tablets of human hearts. In other words, old covenant law was written on tablets of stone. New covenant law written on the hearts. And that's fulfilled how? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's episode one of this current series, The Eternal Sabbath and the New Jerusalem. Uh, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, NCMI Live. And also, please support us. If you are blessed in this new covenant and through these teachings, go to www.patreon.com forward slash NCMI Live. And some people have expressed that they would like to support by check you may send a check to Ward Finley, P.O. Box 1017, Colfax, California, 95713. Thank you so much for tuning into this series. And don't forget to also pay attention to the other series that I'm in the middle of. I just wanted to take a little break from that. Uh, Having come back from this week and a half long sickness, I, I now have energy again. And I appreciate your patience. It was a real drag. Um, But please be watching these two series side by side and you will see a wonderful overlap between the series and, of course, between these incredible passages as we have already seen. So may God richly bless you and uh, I look forward 
to hearing your comments online. Feel free if you have any thoughts, verses that you would like to put out there on my YouTube channel uh, in regard to this series or the other series or any of, any of my videos. I'm, I'm arranging them, of course, in playlists. Please do so. And I'm always blessed by your comments and, of course, continue to pray for me. And I thank God that I'm healed. And I'm just so thankful for the kingdom of God that was accomplished through the death, resurrection, and presence or parousia of Jesus Christ in our hearts. May he be glorified, exalted, worshipped, and adored. Have a great day. God bless you.